<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Roger Ramdahal from Fluent Mortgage. That's right. We're new down here. Woo. And I've got my pal, Shane, Mr. Bergman, in the building. It's been a while since we've had you down here, man. And just figured, you know, let's let's chat a little bit. Let's get some updates. Let's talk about what's happening in the area. I mean, you're my go-to guy for everything. Like, yeah. the minute someone wants to know what's happening, I'm like, talk to Shane. You got to get on the phone with Shane. Let's talk to me, Shane. How's it going, man? Good, man. I mean, it's been an interesting year, I think, for, for both of us yes. also, too. Uh, I'm not the one that's over here creating <laughs> companies and just, you know, exploding in Florida like you are. But that's uh, that's awesome, man. That's what you're doing. But I think overall, man, everything is, is good. We've got lots of growth in the area. I do have to give you credit mm. for it, though, because it was our conversation back, I think, in like January or December and just having that conversation, realizing the opportunity that's here. So... Had I not had that yeah. conversation with you, I'd probably maybe not been doing what we're doing right now. So this just happened yesterday on a call. Like someone was like asking about lenders and whatever. And it's like full, full context. I mean, when you and I had that conversation, it was because like I could identify in you, like the characteristics you have, like your mm -hmm. personality, your drive, just your tenacity, what you would bring to this area. And it's like, yeah. it's hard to find people like that. So that's like when, when we had that candid conversation, I was like, if you decided to do something like you'd dominate you'd crush yeah, yeah. Uh, just because like people in florida maybe it's a different pace we operate at yeah. or maybe it's like different standards that are down here that people are used to but like the pace you work at your intelligence the way that you do operate it's just inspiring and that's like kind of the same like i use i don't want to say it's like a script but if i ever <laughs> tell anyone about you yeah. that though it's some version of that and it's something i truly like mean and it's i, I knew it like when i first met you i, I don't mean like that. toot your own horn on your well, i was just gonna say stop it there i think we had enough this is <laughs> Great. Just, yeah, Let's just, just you know, mail my check, please. Thank you very much for the endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I, but I appreciate that, you know, and, and I think uh, we've worked well together. And you know what I love about it? Same thing with you, too, is, is the passion and, and the knowledge that you have. And so, you know, when any when anyone asks me like, hey, you know, what insights do you have or, or what's happening in the area, even for myself? Right. You yeah. and I have had these conversations and I'm like, hey, Shane, what's happening in this area? And, and we could be honest about it, yeah. too you've just helped my brother. Right. Right. Yep. My brother just is just bought something down here, just closed on it. He's going to be moving his family down here. And the first person I was like, you got to talk to Shane, not for anything else. I love you, uh, you know, as a person, yeah. but I'm like, your knowledge is just amazing. Your insight, the fact that you take the time to dive in. And we were just talking about, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things that's going to be happening in the future down here. And you're already like, yeah, I got the numbers. I got the statistics. Like I know what's happening here, there, whatever. And I'm like, you just don't find that yeah. people that have that passion for what they do. It's a combination of passion. It's a combination of just like really enjoying what I do. Yeah. And I had a call recently with a client and he was talking about, he's like, you know, just wanted to call and catch up and we're chatting. He's like, man, he's like, you know, I don't talk to you that much. He's like, but I watch your videos. And it's like anyone that watches the videos you're doing, like they know you're having fun. And I was like, I am like, it's, a, it's something I, I thoroughly enjoy. Yeah. I do find it like very fulfilling. You know, you, everyone has those days and anything you do that like, ah, today sucked. It wasn't that bad, but those are the minority of days that I have in, in what I do. And it's like, everything else is just great. And it's just like, it's a good career and something that I do have a lot of fun with. Yeah. And it, and it allows me to get creative. It allows me to also like jump in and nerd out on certain things. So real, that's why real estate works for me because it's a, it's a combination of all of that. Yep. And I do thoroughly enjoy data, looking at trends, figuring out like what's new and coming to the area because I do find that that is like what real estate agent professionals should provide to their clients. It's context of everything that they're doing, not just like this is a house you can buy. Here's the price. Here are the comps. Like I want to know more than that. I want to know like future development. What's the future like investment looking like here? Yep. What What's some other information about this site or this location or this build or whatever it may be mm -hmm. that can help someone either make a decision. Yeah. And I got to see that yeah. personally, because like I said, working with my brother, <clears throat> you know, there were many times we were looking at properties yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like, Shane, you know, better than anything. What's, what's this, what's that? How is this going to be developing? What's changing about here? What are your thoughts about the price point? What are your thoughts about the location, the area? I mean, the fact, and especially for me, the fact that I can find someone that I can actually be able to do that with it, it's just a huge, huge plus yeah. because I, I honestly do not find that. I mean, so 
that's the thing that I think that you bring to your clients, man. And I think should inspire a lot of agents, whether they're rookie agents or even senior agents, you know, it's not literally just going to show a client a house and be like, okay, great. Do you want it? Do you not want it? Do you want to put an offer? Do you not want to put an offer? Yeah. Like I want to actually be able to know, yeah. like, what are your thoughts about it, man? Like, what do you really think? You know what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. right? And what my parameters are, what's important to me. What are your thoughts in, in, in helping me in this decision? Especially because here's the thing. Yeah. I'm an outsider, right? I'm coming out from New York, same thing for my brother, has no idea of what's happening down here. And he's solely dependent on you to help him make that decision. Like, that's a lot of responsibility and it's pressure. It's a ton, man. And, and, I, and I love the fact that my clients give me that much amount of trust and that much, like, credit to be able to help them and guide them in that way. And it's something I've always, the way I've practiced real estate, like, very candid to the point. Um, I'm going to tell you the things that like you need to hear, not everything that you just want to hear. It's going to be the, the hard, the hard truth sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've like had this phrase that I've so said sometimes, like I, I sell more people out of houses than in houses. And that's because we could go to a place and most buyers, when they're looking their their emotional level is really high. Like they're going through it, thinking about the future of where their family is going to live and sleep and have Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. They might not be thinking about some of the negatives that that house might have, like, you know, low hanging fruit. We'll talk about the roof. Cause yep. that was something yep. that constantly came up with Roger's yep. situation. Yep. So that's a problem that, that some buyers might not be thinking about because of like, they're too invested in the emotional side. So mm -hmm. I like to point out, you know, the roof age. I like to look at things that inspectors would, would look gas at. Not, not an inspector. Yeah. Gas lines. Right. Like, if, if it's electric or gas. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that's important too, to know, you yeah. know, and it's the little things there where I don't overstep my boundaries of like being an inspector, but it's like, if I could save you a little bit of time and a little bit of effort of like not pursuing a property mm -hmm. that is going to be a problem in the future anyway, whether it's during inspections, if something comes up or a year later, you hate the house and want to move. Like I would rather do some due diligence up front yep. and show you a little bit more property, spend a little bit more time together. So, so when you do purchase that property, you're like, this is the right one. Yep. Shane was right. I love it. Absolutely. That's man. the plan. Doesn't always work out like that, but that's kind of my thought process always going, going into, into with a buyer, yep. you know, as much information as I can and it's like I've been doing real estate long enough to where like I've seen a lot of things and I've handled a lot of transactions but I still learn something all like every day yep so being able to provide that to the clients to I the think client is, is, is a huge is advantage a huge, but I, and I agree uh, and again being able to see that uh, firsthand now the other thing is like and I'm going to deflect to you on this you're seeing dealing with buyers on a day-to-day -day basis some of the issues that are in the market right now especially when it comes to lenders mm -hmm. Being able to get, you know, these loans approved and get them closed, you know, what are your thoughts about that? And, and again, you know, I just want to know because there are people that are going to look at this and they are looking to relocate or looking to buy down here. And I think they're getting this information that's so critical to them to know how to go about doing things, right? So, like, choosing the lender is absolutely important it's so critical to choose the right lender so like what are your insights in terms of what you're seeing with some of the clients that you've worked with or are currently working with like issues that they've had with lenders or deals that you've had that you know have had some issues yeah i mean it's like i said start off with interesting year um where we've seen contracts kind of go back to almost two years ago which was like kind of baseline like where we would say like the normal mm -hmm. real estate market we would say where in a typical real estate market we see somewhere between 20 and like 25 percent of contracts fall through mm -hmm. and it could be for a, a variety of reasons it could be yeah. inspections it could be cold feet it could be remorse it could be shitty lender mm -hmm. uh, most times it's it's either the the shitty lender um, or, or kind of like the cold feet combination, yes, yes. but it's nestled within the inspection continuity. Right. So it's like hard to true, you know, find yeah. that, but we just know from working with a lot of buyers that that's what it is. Right. Um, from the lender perspective side, things we see kind of fall apart are typically promises that the lender makes up front, And then clearly you're not even halfway through the transaction. It's, it's clear. They're not going to be able to mm. accomplish that. And that might be a closing date. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be a loan approval date, which when you are on the listing side, so if I'm representing a seller and we do get multiple offers, yeah. one of the, the contract, the criteria we look at on that contract is a loan approval date. Mm -hmm. Now in Florida, the as is contract defaults to 30 days. Mm -hmm. Most real estate agents leave that blank. And I don't know if they leave it blank because they don't know or gotcha. because they're trying to benefit their buyer client, which it, uh. I can see it both ways. And I don't want to like take yeah, this down yeah, this yeah. long of path, course. but mm -hmm. Something that I typically would encourage my sellers to counter on is that loan approval date. I want to mm -hmm. see that loan approval date 20 days, 25 days. Yes. And it absolutely should at least be a week before closing. Right. Right. Um, whenever you counter back on that, most of the time the buyers probably don't check in with their lender or if they do that lender might realize they're 
backed up against mm -hmm, a corner mm -hmm. and say, yes, we can accomplish that. Right. Then we get through the transaction. Maybe inspections go great. And then if the appraisal hasn't been ordered, this is where it gets this gets because now you're way behind. We're way behind the schedule. We know we're not going to be able to hit that timeline, and it yep. puts those buyers at such a severe disadvantage because up front that lender said, "Yeah, we can hit 20 days," mm -hmm. and now here they are, day 18, appraisal hasn't even been ordered. There's no way they can get loan approval yeah. without you know any other existing contingencies yep. or conditions. So at that point, it puts the buyer in a really shitty spot. Like, are they going to get loan approval and all their contingencies are released, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or? What are they going to do? Ask right. for an extended closing. Then it just puts everyone in a yep. bad spot. So we see that happening. Um, now, do you think it's just because the lenders are trying to grasp at, at deals? Because, I mean, again, it's a competitive market. Yeah. People are trying to get business. And and depending on where you are, yes, it might be um, a very active market. But do you think that sometimes it's them just kind of grasping at things because it's like, hey, I don't want to lose this deal to my competitor. So if I got to say I could do it, I'll just say it just so I could get the deal. And then, like you just said, yeah. knowing that it's unrealistic, that they can't meet those obligations, but they're just going to try to do it. I think it's probably a combination of the lenders wanting to make sure that, that they're able to be there for their client. So mm -hmm. they're, they're going to be, yeah, if, yeah, I can, I can knock that out. Cause yeah. in, a, in a perfect, like a, in a perfect lend, lender and, and a buyer situation, like yeah. if they had a really clean file, like I imagine 20 days is, is doable. Yes. Super simple. Absolutely. Um, but it, it also might get to the point where maybe the client, the person getting the loan mm -hmm. isn't as organized and maybe it isn't on the lender. So maybe it's the client just taking their time to get the docs that they need over. So it's a combination of both, but I, but I think people could look at what kind of transactions we're seeing nationwide yes. and that most lending and buyers, that pool has been shrinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there is a good portion of that. It's like buyers, you know, want things and lenders are going to say, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Right. Um, whether they have the full confidence up front, knowing they can do that or not, I'm uncertain on that. I and imagine. I think, you know, my thought on that is like, I think, even if like you just use the example, right? Like again, everyone's different. Some buyers are organized, some buyers are not organized, right? In terms of getting their paperwork. But I think if you prep the mindset of that client and that buyer from the beginning mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, understand something. It's a, it's a 30 day, you know, transaction. Before that, you gotta get your commitment. Yep. Like literally you've gotta be on point with getting whatever I need, when I need it so that we can close because if not, you're only going to hurt yourself and put yourself in a position where you're going to lose that property, right? How are you like managing that with with your clients? Yeah, like, what so, do you do to no, keep it? No, great question. So that's managing expectations. I think is one of the huge and and for me really important things when I'm having an initial conversation with a client is I try to explain to them this is how this process is going to be. You're going to be getting calls from processors. You're going to need to send paperwork. I'm going to need to be able to get in touch with you because you have to understand something. It's 30 days. Yeah, moving quick. There's a lot that has to happen. And if you don't cooperate, it's going to just push everything back. And this is not just something where you can go back and say, hey, we need to get an extension and everyone's going to be okay with it, yeah, right? Not and you already know all the work that it took to get your offer accepted, you know, competing with maybe multiple buyers. You don't want to lose this property yep. because you might not have something lined up right after that. So again, if you do your part, I can do my part and we'll get to that closing table and we'll get to it in more than enough time where you don't have to feel too rushed. Yeah. So when I manage that expectation from the beginning, honestly speaking, we have had absolute just, you know, communication and, and working together, you know, in getting in getting things done. And I know on your app too, like I've joked with you about it, like oh, my bro. <laughs> I've got enough apps. I don't need another one. Uh, but yet I keep getting email invites about downloading. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's happening. Yes. Um, but I know your app, because uh, I, I, I have looked at it. It's. It, it seems like it's really well organized. And from a client face, like if I was getting a loan with you, yeah. it seems like I can just get everything in there and make it really streamlined. Is that kind of why you guys And that's exactly like it. So, you know, technology is super important to us, right? And we're always looking at it from the perspective of our clients, right? Like, how do we make their lives easier? Because everyone's busy, right? Yeah. Whether you got kids, you're working, like, it's crazy. And so, like, we want to make that process as easy as possible for you to get us the paperwork, for us to be in communication, and again, ultimately to get the whole process taken care of. So it starts from our mobile app. So the minute we have a conversation, our first thing is, hey, we're sending you a mobile app, download the link, you can complete your application, upload all your paperwork right there. Once that's done, I literally tell them, the minute you complete it, I'm going to get an alert. Within typically an hour, I could get a pre-approval uh, pre letter. If it's a little bit complex, once I start looking at that, I'm like, okay, give me another you know, 24 hours. I'll get you a pre-commitment letter. But now we've covered everything in terms of paperwork within that first 24 yep. hours. 
that's about, I would say, 50% of the paperwork that we need right there. Now, as we go through the process of them finding a home, I'm like, okay, so now here is what you need. You're going to need to get me A, B, C, D, E. The processor is going to be asking that for you as well. You don't have to worry. There's a scanner right in the mobile app. You just take pictures of everything. It goes right into our system. So literally, we're just making it so convenient yeah. for that client to not have to feel the burden of going out of their way to get this process done and getting paperwork over. They get to see what they're uploading. So now, you know, there's always this thing about, well, I sent over everything over to the lender and they're telling me to resend it yeah. over and over and over, right? Where did that shit go? We're eliminating yeah. that. Um, and then of course it keeps them abreast. It, they get the alert, hey, file's been, uh, you know, there's a commitment letter, appraisal's been ordered, file's submitted for clear to close, rate's been locked in. They get all those alerts. So it just kind of keeps everything moving and everyone knowing what's happening. Yeah, no, it's streamlined. Um, and I, anyone, like, if you're watching and listening, so this is, this is, I'm going to put you on the spot with this one. <laughs> I'm a decent buyer. Put yep. in a, my, my application. You get me a, a pre-approval letter quickly. How fast can you, can I close on a property with you? All right. So again, <laughs> if, if we work together as a team, mm -hmm. we are able to close deals as quickly as 10 days. For that's financing? Financing. 10 days. You're going to. 10 days. That's nuts. And again, it's just because the way our system is built we can, with the use of technology, yes, there's manpower in there too, but with the use of the technology, we are able to get those deals done from start to finish, whether it's getting the appraisal, the title, getting everything in, we close loans as quickly as 10 days. It's so like wild and dating back to like our initial conversations Yeah, where, so you, it was me, you and Jesse riding house yep. out in Orlando. And like, as you're telling us, shout out to Jesse, shout out yeah, big shout out to Jesse. <laughs> he's probably wearing his gloves. Doing a yeah, right. summer. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but like, I think both of us, like if you were a fly on the wall in that kind both of us were like, what? Like mm -hmm. jaw dropping. Like, are you shitting me? Cause like, you know, Jesse's been doing real estate, I think going on 60 years this month. Um, and I've got the hair to show it. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing it a long time, but long enough to know that like what we're used to. And I think we get comfortable in this, like, Oh cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A good lender, uh, 30 day close. Like that's yeah. kind of been the expectation for the last few years. Like if your lender can close it in 30 days, that's fast. Mm -hmm. The average is 35, a slower lender is going to be closer to 40 or 45 days. Right. Hearing anything like South of 30 days is like, what? No, yeah. there, no, there's no way. But like literally you, you've now, I think we've done three yep. together that have closed like that fast. Are you at least ready to rock? Like, Hey, we're Absolutely. just cruising. We're waiting for closing. Way before, you guys way, that wrote way a before, contract, yeah, that was way before closing of the contract, we were done. And again, that's just because for us as well, we don't, we don't want to put our clients in that position where they have to feel like their backs are against yep. the wall, especially because there's no reason for that, right? If you if you have a service and a system and communication, there's no reason that any lender cannot close deals in that period of time. Yeah, We've just found a really great way of doing it and streamlining it and then taking that mainstream with it, you know? Um, but again, whether it's our referral sources, you know, we try to, even with the app part of it, we have a co-branding section where they can share the app and they get notified of everything that happens. Um, and you know, the other part about that, mm -hmm. again, if you're working with buyers, we can set the parameters for that pre-commitment or that pre, uh, pre-approval. You then can go in and print out your own pre-approvals on the spot. So as an agent, you have the access through our app to be able to do that. Yeah. How many times are we, you know, you're at an open house, you see some buyers like, hey, man, what would be my payment on this? Like, you know, if I, it, with the taxes and everything, like the, I need to know what my monthly payment is. Yeah, you might, if you're a great, you know, realtor, have like a mortgage calculator, you could kind of plug everything in. But if you have the app, you're like, hey, listen, everything's there. It, it will compare FHA, conv conventional loans, uh, USDAs, VAs. It gives you a breakdown and a, a, a cost analysis for both of them. Yeah. You know, which is, again, a great tool to have as a buyer, as an agent. So technology, we talked about it again, is just playing a huge part. And this is something that we haven't even talked about, which is we're rolling out AI underwriting. Okay. That's so now interesting. You're you're at an open house on a weekend and you're like, I really, you know, my clients want this house. How can we get a commitment letter today? Like, think about how that would blow the mind of that agent if you were to be like, hey, I came to this open house and I'm gonna get you a commitment for my clients in the next hour. So what we do is through AI, we can upload all of that paperwork to that system. It will re review the income, the assets, the pay, everything. Yeah. And then it will look at the guidelines for a conventional loan, FHA loan, Fannie, Freddie, whatever it is, and it will generate an actual commitment letter. I mean, that's pretty sweet. 
<laughs> <laughs> but like the last couple of things you mentioned about the app, like it sounds like super beneficial. It's like a mutual benefit, right? Yes. So it's like you as the lender, you're, you're able to like not have to be up at midnight for someone that wants a, you know, a, a yes. letter that says, well, we want a letter that says 525, not 550 because we want to right. put in an offer at 525. We don't want to show our cards. That's a, yep. that's a whole other thing to talk about. <laughs> and then the AI aspect of it too, man, that that's pretty sweet that, and I, again, I don't know a lot of lenders that are rocking that kind of stuff. I don't know a lot of mobile apps out there that are as intuitive mm -hmm. uh, and have the tools that yours does. Yeah. Uh, maybe I just, cause I've always been apprehensive about downloading them and so I to <laughs> try and try and try, then I'll finally, you yeah. know, but do it. I, I believe, like I said, you know, for us, there's a, it's about continuously pushing the boundaries of what's new out there. But the the essence of it all is just making the process in itself seamless. Because that's the reality of the world right now, right? Like if we have the tools to make life easier, like ChatGPT, yep. if we have the tools to make life easier, why are we not utilizing them, right? Even in lending and, and real estate, like why are we not utilizing these tools when they're there? So for us, it's like, hey, if we can make our lives and our clients' lives and everybody's lives easier, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. No, it's a, I mean, it's a good tool. And like AI has been talked about a lot recently. Like you have the people that are on the fear side of it that think it's like going to replace jobs and it's going to mm -hmm. like do some pretty bad things, which it can, I think it has a capability of it, but yeah. then like the side of it, like where it actually, it makes us more efficient and more yes. streamlined. Uh, yeah. even the other day, like I was actually writing an email to Jesse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And he, he had like started the email off with like some funny context of like, Hey, it's the guy that wants to join your team, but would never be allowed to, but Hey, I'm just checking in on this. <laughs> and, uh, there was like some band and it was a chain with yeah. like eight of us on there. Yeah. And, um, I wanted to respond and I wanted to basically like let Jesse know that I appreciate him, but he will never be on the team. And so I had chat GPT make me a poem That is crazy. <laughs> to, to let Jesse know that I appreciate him, but he'll never be on the team. And then I sent it and then everyone on the thread was like dying. You know, it's one of those, it's just like a fun usage yes. of that tool, yeah. but to show the capability of what chat GPT can do and all these other, there's a ton of other AI yep. programs out there, but it is exciting stuff. And I'm yeah. glad you guys are utilizing it for, for workload and efficiency. No, I appreciate it. And again, that's, that's, that's something that's really important to us, you know? But let's let's talk a little yeah. bit about again, since you know everything, all Vieira, Melbourne, Space Coast. Well, on the spot. Let's let's hear what's happening. Give us an update. Tell us what's what's changing down here. Because by the way, I didn't share this. Since we started putting out some content and people are seeing that we're actually lending down here and we have a branch down yeah. here, we've actually started getting referrals from people that are like, hey, I see what you guys are putting out. You guys seem to like have a ton of knowledge about the area, specifically you, Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, a ton of knowledge about the area. Like we've actually learned so much about, you know, looking at like, you know, the Space Coast and why we want to buy out here. Now let's talk about what's happening. Cause I know you know about Vieira and the build out right. and just so much buzz about it and hype and, Talk to me. What's 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 happening? Yeah. What's and, the update? And like for con, like I just like to preface with this, like there's a lot going on throughout the county. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just like it's a lot of information to track. So I had to make like a conscious decision. And this went back three years ago. Like I need to be hyper focused mm -hmm. on an area because otherwise, like you might know a good amount, maybe like a decent amount about the county, but you're not going to know like specifics and yeah. be real deep. So I, w I wanted to dive real deep into the Vieira community where I live, mm -hmm. where I like to sell and, and where like you know, my friends and family hang out. So yeah. that's what like the context of, of how I know the, the stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't want to discredit the rest of the County that also has significant growth. Right? There's lots mm -hmm. of good things happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but specifically in Vieira, it's just really exciting to be in the communities and just seeing all this growth. And it's almost like on a daily basis, like I'll be out cruising on the golf cart or with the family. And I was like, shit, I didn't even notice that before. Yeah. Like, what are they doing here? They just cleared off this land. Like, what are they building? Yep. And then I start kind of poking around asking questions and it's like, oh, this is what they're building here. So like, you know, Vieira builders, most people know they're, they're a master, it's a master plan community. Mm -hmm. So they call it a 20 year plan where they've had these these plans in the works for a very, very long time. And they're very early in the development of what Vieira is and what it will be in the future. Yeah. Um, for anyone that lives in central Florida, if you're familiar with Lake Nona, mm -hmm. Lake Nona is, is like a larger, like it's kind of what Vieira is working towards. Yeah. Um, Lake Nona is great. I mean, there's just lots of amenities there. It's very family friendly. They have schools in the community, mm -hmm. just like Vieira is kind of doing right. now. So if you start thinking yep. about it like that, so anyone that lives in Orlando, that's familiar with like Nona, but maybe they're moving to the space coast or want to be on the space coast. That's yeah. like the closest comparison. Mm -hmm. Um, but not only is residential booming right now in the whole Vieira proper area, it's like commercial, right? Yeah. Well, com so commercial development is, is just 
going nuts right now. So there, we'll we'll talk a, a couple of different topics now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. B- before the show, we talked about Borrows West. Yep. Um, when I first saw the name, I thought people would have a really hard time like pronouncing because I'm like thinking New I'll York. Think, like, I'll like Borrows, 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 Borrows. I thought they spelt it borrowed. Like, yeah. I, let me borrow your shoes, Raj. Right. I thought they spelt it like that, but wanted people to pronounce it Burrows. Burrows. Like the Burrows in New York. Gotcha. Um, but no, they named it Borrows West okay. because the dirt that they used to build that area, ah. they borrowed it from That's other crazy. development to to actually the east of where they're building Borrows West. That's good to know. I I, I never knew that. It's just a little, that's how they name it, but it's cool. It's a fun name. So yeah. Borrows West right now is kind of like, a, it's a big buzz in mm-hmm. Vieira, mm-hmm. um, specifically because I think people are really, really excited about the wine bar. It's called Venezia. Um, that is, that is, will be built, should be by the end of the year. Okay. Um, the first of its kind really in the area. So again, I'll go back to, to Orlando area. Winter Park yes. had a, a wine room, they called mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. where you could go in there, you could get a wine card and you could put $100, $200 on it and then get a four ounce pour or a two ounce pour of wine, any mm-hmm. wine you want. And then it's all charged based off of the bottle price yeah. and the ounces. And you could yeah. try a really, really expensive bottle of wine for cheap. Yeah. So Venezia is, is, really cool. is offering that. I like that, that idea. Yeah. I mean, have you ever, have you seen those wine dispensers? I have not, but I think that's super cool. That's a really nice idea. So Ember and Oak had one for a bit mm-hmm. and I, they still have it there where it's the same concept, like a smaller scale. Yeah. But Venezia is actually going to be like a wine bar. So they're going to have a ton of wine selections there. It's right, two so stories. You know, a, when, once that's open, we're going to do a, we have to. a video out there. Dude, that place is going to, like, as soon as it's open, like, you think about it, it's in the you're heart not, of the year. Like, you're not getting a, it's a, a be, place in there. It's going to be jammed, but it's in a, it's in a location that uh, is, is really practical for cause there's a ton of, tons of residential to the mm-hmm. west of it. Uh, but it's a cool concept. We don't have it in Vieira right now. Two stories, wine bar. They're going to have some food there. Second floor is going to be f- for food and observation. Oh, nice. Um, just really, really cool things. They're, they're bringing a couple of chains into that area as well. Mm-hmm. So Ford's Garage, if you've ever been to one, which I mm-hmm. actually have not. but Me people, either, but I've heard of it. You know, they, they just, you know, rave about it because the Kraft Burgers, they have a good craft beer selection. Um, just a cool spot to hang out. And then there's talks of uh, there's a tiki joint come into the area too. Okay. And my my barber, this is we're on like this weird. Yeah. My barber is like way into that tiki um, culture. So I don't yeah. know if you've ever had like a true like tiki experience. Somewhat uh, like halfway, but yeah. Uh-huh. But but like so that's like a whole thing. Like yeah. these guys that like, collect the tiki cups, they go, to, they know they all the spots the whole, to go. They like, got, I mean, tiki. to make a freaking tiki cocktail, it's like thirty ingredients, and it's like a drop of this, an ounce of that. You shake it for, <laughs> and it's just like right, right. Holy crap, man! Like this is like a science experiment. By the time I'm finished making the drink, I need another drink. I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it takes forever, but like a true, a proper tiki drink is, mm-hmm. is delicious. I just yeah. don't want to make it. So the tiki joint that's opening up in Borrows West will, ah. will have that. And apparently they've absorbed recipes. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the first time, because it's a chain, yeah. the first time that they're actually going to be releasing these recipes from the cocktail standpoint at that restaurant. Very so, nice. so it's really cool. So that's just like three restaurants that are Which that I are kind of really there. love hearing about because I... I mean, I'm going to be honest, coming from the outside, that is something I've always looked at. I'm like, man, we just, we need some great eateries down here. You yes. know what I mean? Some like really nice restaurants. Yeah. And it's really nice to be able to see that coming out there, not just on the avenues, but now. Yeah. You expanding know, out a little West, bit. Right? Yeah. yeah. And there's, I mean, that's also going to be, there's commercial, like you have restaurants, but there's going to be office space there too mm-hmm. as well. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> um, so, so cool area up and coming. That's more on like the northern side of Vieira. So if you're familiar with mm-hmm. um, Stadium Parkway and really yes. Vieira Boulevard, it's kind yep. of that intersection. Mm-hmm. The Chick-fil-A up there, there's a Wawa. Yes. It's just south of that. Okay. I so know think about is. that. They're, they just did a new roundabout there. Uh, that whole area, like I just only talked about a few of the restaurants, but there's a park, there's mm-hmm. water, there's a walking path. Like there's lots of cool things that nice. will be developed there. And I think the overall plan on that is over the next three years, mm-hmm. it'll be primarily built out. I got to tell you, like I keep hearing about these new developments and new areas, and new build outs. And I'm just like, I mean, like you just said, it's, it's a master planned area. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just amazing just how I keep seeing the development happens out there. And it's funny because the more I see it, I'm like, man, this is just amazing. This yeah. is just awesome. This is just, it's like, everyone's just happy out there. Right. Like there's just always <laughs> something new going, but I'm like, I love, I love the whole concept of it because like one of the things that, that kind of, I was sold on was loving to see people like kids, especially driving around on the golf carts, getting to where they want to get to. It just, it just seems like this, 
nice knit community in like the middle of like nowhere and almost, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's like, the, you know, they say you're in your own little bubble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And when you're outside of the bubble. Cause I lived outside of the bubble for a long time. I, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I think Vieira has its little, like if you do not live in Vieira, even if you live in it, like there's certain like nuances to it where you're like, ah, I don't really know. But, I, but every community has that. Yeah. It's not just Vieira. Vieira is like the, the loudest and the, and the most known. So if mm -hmm. you want to make fun of a community, Vieira is just there for it. But if you're breaking down the County, and you're breaking down a location that offers the most convenience, the best schools, arguably the best developers and builders in mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. There's really one location, yep. uh, you know, and, and that's why I think Vieira is what it is. Um, and that's why I really enjoy it there for, for all of those things, the conveniences to, to shopping, to the Avenue for the schools. I have two young boys, you know, it's like wanting that. And then just like the practicality and the convenience of like being able to jump on the golf cart, pick them up from daycare, shoot around, go to the Avenue, like get yep. ice cream. Like th that's just like fun stuff that like, I want my boys to have memories of yes. when they get older, like, Oh, we did this with dad when you know, you got, you got an opportunity. And yeah. that's, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people want some people may not realize that that the opportunity is there is like that quality of life yeah. and we've talked a lot yeah, about man. that right but like you just said man being able to pick your kids up your boys up and be able to like say hey let's go grab some ice cream hang out watch a movie yeah grab grab something to eat at a restaurant like everything just being right there just gives you that opportunity to have that work life balance yep. right and that's the amazing part about what that area is. And the other thing I was going to say is to think about they're just still in like the initial development yeah. of the area. Think about the next five years and 10 years, what that's going to look like out there. I mean, wild man. And I think that like when you are thinking about buying in an area, like, like all the things I talked about as convenience is like, there are probably people that are like, I don't want that. I don't want to be this close to my neighbors and I don't want to see people on the streets. Like, yeah. of course that's fine. Mm -hmm. But, but put that to the side and let's talk about like the investment component of it. Like it's an area with significant growth. There's yes. significant residential being developed right now and will be for the foreseeable future. Right. Like property prices in there. Like I have clients that have, that purchased two years ago and we're talking 200, 300% more. Like it, like that's, that's, that's crazy. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Like the numbers of, <laughs> of profitability out there just from a real estate investment yeah. standpoint, like are on almost unheard of. Yes. And it's on a consistent basis in these neighborhoods where it's like, that wasn't an anomaly. Like that's the trends in these areas. That just shows the desirability. I was just going to say yeah. that just goes to show you how much people see that area as such a desirable place to be at. And mm -hmm. I don't see that changing. And again, you look in just at just a couple of years ago and, and what they're looking to do systematically building it out. I just cannot see. And, you know, there's there's just talks about like there's certain areas of, you know, Florida that might see a, a recession in prices yeah. and things like that. I cannot see that in that area. No, and, you, and like, so that's why this is a conversation I had with my team about like, you can't just say it's a buyer's market or seller's market. That's a, that's a macro view, right? Yes. But there yes. are locations within our county that are micro seller markets, yep. micro buyer markets. Yep. Vieira right now is in this, I mean, really, really nice spot where it's, it's still a micro seller's market. Mm -hmm. As long as like you're priced well and your house wasn't completely destroyed because you've only had it for three or four years. Like hopefully, yeah. you know, it's not a complete shithole. Um, it's, you're going to make some money on it, mm -hmm. but you know, in, in this, in where we're living, like that's the desirability of people wanting to get in there. Um, and it's just a, an exciting thing to kind of track, to be a part of, and just like see when people sell their homes and, and they're able to make a significant profit. Yeah. Like there's not a lot of, things you can do in life and profit that much money in that short amount of time. Yep. Um, and when people and, and enjoy yeah. life while doing it and right? also like, like, <laughs> like yeah, actually like enjoying where you're living and seeing that appreciation and you know, all the other development and being able to like upgrade, meaning like, you yeah. know, as, as someone that bought in, yeah, a new development might be happening and you're like, Oh, well I can sell, make money yeah. and upgrade to something else that I want. And, and that and shit happens all the time in Vieira. Right. And, and like people might not understand this. So back to like micro sellers market, micro buyers market in Vieira right now, in one of the communities that they're building, there's still a lottery. Mm -hmm. So this is specifically about Laurasia, Laurasia, yeah. South end of Vieira gated community, very close to Carrington and Stonecrest with mm -hmm. those communities offered. Yeah. There's a lottery in that community right now. That's so as well, if you're reading headlines, oh, the, you know, the, the real estate market slowing and down, no at, one's buying. There's, a lottery? Like, there's like, a lottery for people to get a lot That's how much demand there. there is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know the percentages off, off the head and I don't know if I'll ever be able to track them, but if I'm guessing it's probably around 20% of the people that are buying these new communities in Vieira mm -hmm. already live in Vieira yep. and they probably bought the home they're in currently three or four years ago and they just hopped to the newest community. Mm-hmm. 
and they yep. continue doing that. And that's something I've had conversations with clients about. It's like most people that own a million, $2 million property, it's not the first house they bought. Right. They've had right. multiple properties in the past Yep. and they've held on to them long enough. We just got l l lucky with the season yeah. and we're able to cash out and take the proceeds, roll into the next one and keep rolling that in until where it's yep. like, I got a ton of equity. I'm buying down the principal or yeah. they're able to yeah. buy it cash. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what people do in Vieira when they're in these, you know, there's just, we're talking so much future ahead of that. And look, I, I do a lot of uh, business all over the country and there's just not many communities like that, yeah. that I see out there. That's just like, you can look at the future and you're like, I just do not see that being affected by the market, any type of negative market. Like, it's just, like you just said, it is just, it's, it's own little micro community yep. where there is just that demand. People see the opportunity, people see the future and want to be a part of it. It's got a lot of insulation, I think is like the best way yes. to kind of like categorize it. Yep. Um, and I, and that was like what ultimately led to our, like one of the reasons why we moved to that area, mm -hmm. you know, it's cause like, I wasn't too keen on having 20 foot, 15 foot, like separation between the homes, yeah. like <laughs> but like is anyone like, yeah i mean and it's then like, you get used to it and it's like you get oh, used okay, to it, you know? but i think it's like in, in real estate like if you've bought enough real estate you understand that like there's always some sort of compromise yes so what are you going to compromise on for mm -hmm. us we made the compromise that i'm just like a little bit closer to my neighbors than i would prefer right but that's okay like we'll, we'll be i don't cool have to we'll, see them naked yeah exactly <laughs> or you know what now if i run out of some hey man i, I need a bottle of wine and yeah, just I shoot on over like, man you know yeah we're cool now you're doing a driveway party and next thing you know you're just crawling home and it's right there it's not that bad of a deal but i think there are people that probably don't want that but i mean it's just it's a, it's a great investment good area high practicality and convenience yeah if you just looked at this you realize just how knowledgeable this guy is about the area and everything that's happening um and that's why i think you your team you, you know your office just continues to thrive is because it's like you you've just got your foot on the gas in terms of just everything just you know the information the technology um the service. Yeah. I mean, Dude. again, just being able to kind of work with you through uh, some of these processes, I'm like, man, that service is like, there's always someone there to be in touch with. Yeah. I mean, that's been a huge help, like building out the team. And that started during the pandemic where, you know, that was balls to the wall real mm -hmm. estate. And it was just me. Yeah. You know, we have our whole CK team as far as transactional support, listing support, all those other things, but like sh literally like showing homes, physically showing homes, buyers, like there's only so many hours in data to handle that. So, I was able to bring on two remarkable agents and the way that I've told my clients about this is like, we're all very skilled, hot, you know, high level mm -hmm. of, of uh, volume. Um, but, but we can offer three schedules versus just one. Right. And like even tomorrow morning, like I'm Austin, one of my sales partners is showing a property yeah. at nine in the morning. We have a team photo shoot at 10. Wow. So it's like, I'm showing at nine, he's showing yep. at nine, but yep. like, these are clients. We just like, we truly work in like an efficiency yeah. team format. Yeah. Um, and I just love having that availability, but also the clients really appreciate it because it's like when you pay for one, you get not only my immediate team, but, but the all CK team. And it's just like yes. a, a cool way to, to kind of view it. We've talked about it in the past where it's like the day of the single agent is probably, you know, closing in. It's just yep. hard to be a single agent. Especially if you're, if, if you're successful. If you're looking to really scale and be successful, right? Like you just cannot do it as a single agent. It's just hard, man. You're going to, you're going to be dropping in balls somewhere. You know, you're going to, there's going to be holes in your business. There's going to the be more of those that you keep dropping. Your reputation gets tarnished, especially in a small County like Brevard. Yep. You know, and then it's like, you also look at the personal side of it. Like how is your personal life? Like, is it balanced? Are you spending quality time yep. with your family and with your children? If you have them, like things like that, where it's like a single agent, if they're trying to sell a lot of real estate, it's just hard to find that balance. So the mm -hmm. team offers that just kind of support that. Uh, I, I wish I knew about, you know, I've been doing real estate eight years, been in teams for the last five to going on six. Yeah. Um, had I started into a team, that'd have been great, but I didn't. So I think that's just the way of the future for real estate. I do estate. have to say though, I, I think at the rate that you're going and the success that you guys are having, I think you might need to kind of open it up for more. <laughs> I know there's a lot of agents out there yeah. that are looking at what you guys are doing and they're like, ah, oh, you know, how, how can I be a part of that? You know, is, like, that, is that a possibility? I mean, I know I'm putting you in the hot seat, yeah. but um, is that something that is possible for, for you to expand and make room for? Yes and no. So to give you like a reason on this, I have, I really enjoy the team we have right now. It's small. It's, it's a, it's a controlled group where I know that like, 
I can be there for, for my team members and I can check in on the, with them mm -hmm. and like treat it like a family. I feel like the larger the team goes, the more that, that I will be diluted mm -hmm. in that aspect, yeah. Yeah. which might be okay from a leadership standpoint, but I like having that. I also take a lot of pride in having a really small team mm -hmm. that pumps out a mega load of real estate. Cause yes. when you compare our team of three that sell yep. to a team of 10, 20, uh, what well, we sell more. Yeah. And yeah, then when, when people funny. see that, they're like, what, there's only three of you. That I've sell? always, I've always thought that's a funny aspect of, in, in terms of our like business, right? Like some people be like, yeah, I've got like a hundred agents and you're like, yeah, one volume. Are you How pumping many am I selling? Out? Like 10 of them are doing the business that you have a hundred agents. So like only 10 of them are doing the business. So like why have a hundred agents it's, it's a, to be able to yeah. say, I have a hundred agents, right? No. But like, I ra I would rather be the guy that's like, yeah, it's three of us and we're pumping out, you know, like 400 transactions yeah. or 300 transactions a year. And you're like, holy crap. Yeah. I mean, our, so our, the whole CK team, there's, there's a little more than 20, I think 20 of us that sell 19 or 20. Yeah. The, the, the 20 of us that sell outperform brokerages with, with hundreds of people. Cause last year, you know, our team, that's I our see team. the numbers. I'm like, it's, it's unbelievable. It's freaking yeah. unbelievable. And that's the mantra of CK, high yeah. quality agents, high volume, not a big team. Mm -hmm. And I've just taken that same, those same principles and like refined it even more. How can I have like a smaller yes. team and even more produced? Cause I love saying that, yeah, our team sold 73 million last year. And then they're waiting for me to tell them how many people we have with three people. Yes. And, and then they're, they're like, like, what the, f <laughs> and what's the median sales price? There gotta be $2 million. Right. 350. Right. Right. And they're and just like, how, like that, how many units is that? How is that even possible? Yeah. And I love that because that like you, then you look at the team and you look at them differently. You're yep. like, oh, they know their shit. Exactly. And I exactly. love that. that uh, and, I, and I think that's why we work well together. And we look at that because the efficiency side, like we're yeah. always, I think both of us are looking at, look, we have, we handle high levels of transactions. And so we're always looking at ways to keep the service side of it. Mm -hmm but make it so much more streamlined for everyone, right? Yeah, something that I, that's always in my thought process is just quality over quantity. Yes. In almost everything I do in life. It's yes. always like, how can I provide a better quality experience, a better this, better that? Like even before heading here, like when you and I were texting, yeah. um, I was working on a, appointment reminder softwares. So I, so you probably got my text appointment reminders. Yeah. And I customized <laughs> those and I have them sent out on certain yes. keywords. Yep. But I'm like so specific about I want it to be like I want to evoke a certain emotion from people when mm -hmm. it, when they do this and I don't think a lot of people think about it like this de yeah, deep in yeah, detail yeah. but certain keywords if they're if it's an appointment on my calendar yeah. a certain keyword will trigger off a certain series of appointment reminders yes. and yes. I want people to like see it and laugh and like I, what the, this guy, what the you know, and that's the that's what I want and then I want people to come meet me at the appointment and then just like have it as a talking point like, yes got your robot reminder yeah that's right. pretty funny <laughs> you know it also allows me to like understand like well if it's someone I'm meeting for the first time if they're offended by it psh, probably not gonna go right great right um, but if they come back and they like I've had clients right back and, and yeah I've got your million messages that yeah. reminds me whatever and and if they're yeah. like super cool about it you're like all right cool like, yeah this you is know, cool we'll, we hit we'll that first barrier cool man we're gonna be yep. this is gonna be fun other yep. but if not like I'd rather kind of figure yeah. that out up yeah. front but like levels of, the, of that shit that I don't think a lot of people are like why would we care so it's like <laughs> I want that level of service where people like it's unforgettable it's fun but with a ton of professionalism and that's going back to kind of what I was saying too. Like even with like our service in terms on the lending side, it's the same exact thing. Like we, when I say like, we want to be at the highest level of like just efficiency where clients don't have to think to themselves, yeah. Hey, what, what is happening here? What's going on? You know, we have to be, keep them in the loop of everything. Like we want to be on top of their minds all throughout that process. And you know, what's crazy is like so many times we'll be like, Hey, by the way, you, uh, you've got to clear to close and it's like 12 days. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like how, how, like, are you serious? Like that's the easiest. There was one client that actually said he's bought multiple houses. He goes, this is the absolute easiest it's ever been. Like I, I did not even understand how quickly that all happened. And that's when, you know, you know, you're like, <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> and that yeah. and right there is what we go for for every Everyone. single transaction yeah every single like we want to be like wow do you have other systems in your business so you're on the offense because it because in the real estate like on the realtor side it's the same like i would much rather play on offense yep you know like if it's a seller i'd much rather give them the analytics the showing feedback whatever i can yeah i never want them asking me for it because then i'm like yeah, i don't want to be in defense so I'm, right. I'm playing on offense like what do you guys do it's to the same thing so like again that's why we have the notifications yep so like every step of the process as a consumer you're being notified you're getting emails text messages right you're you know someone's on the phone with you 
So you're like, you're always in the know of what's happening, what's next, what's going to happen. When was your appraisal ordered? Uh, when's your file going into underwriting? When was it underwritten? When's it going back in for a clear to close? When was it locked? You know, all these different things, you as a consumer don't even have to question it. You're getting notified of you're it. You're just on, on it. So okay. it's always something, again, whether it's an individual or something automated, there's always an update for that client. And I think that just provides like that level of like, because like buying real estate, even if you're like selling and buying at the same time, it's probably one of the most stressful things yeah. people will do. Um, and just having that, like, I think comfort of like knowing that like it's handled, someone's working on it or just like letting them know, like, Hey, I'm still trying to get this. Like yes. we're working on it. Like, I feel like that's really important to do. And that's something like in the military, we were always like trained, you know, with communication, mm -hmm. like acknowledge the, the comms. Yes. You know, that's where like 10, four comes out, like or copy, like that's yeah, what people yeah, say yeah. that because yep. they're acknowledging uh, the comms. And I've noticed in like the real estate space, people don't do that on emails. Um, mm -hmm. and I've had conversations with people. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't ever want to ask like, did you get my email? Right. It's like, yeah, I got it. Well, why <laughs> didn't you tell me you got it? And uh, they're like, well, I don't want to add another email to your email. And I was like, well, right. I, I want like that confirmation. So, yeah. so yeah. what I did, and this is, five years ago is like bought the software so I could track emails and see that it was opened because like no one in real estate wanted to acknowledge an email. Yes. I'm like, that's so crazy. So yes. I do that on all of them. Like even if it's just like received, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same on, like I love how on the text message they've, that's why my read receipts are on. Yes. That's yes. why it's like, you if you text me something, I just will like it Yep. just so you know, I read it. Exactly. I, I, exactly. It just blows my mind that like that other people are on that to same page. Communication is huge, man. Yeah. And, and, and you've seen that from both sides, yeah. right? Like anytime you send a message, there's an answer to that. There's a reply to that. Yep. Same thing with clients. Like I might be shooting content and my phone's going off, but there's someone touching back base with them. There's something that's going to be on my phone there. Or in literally five minutes, I'm going to be communicating with all those people. Yeah, like, you're able to get on it. It's super important. And I think it's amazing how many people in our profession do not realize the importance of that. Like, I, yeah. and, and that's the thing I think where the majority of buyers now or clients now are moving in a direction where it's like, if you aren't using technology to meet that service and that demand, like you're, you're losing, like you're so far behind, you're losing so much market share because as long as someone like you and someone like me comes and offers what we're offering, it makes the competition look like horseshit. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, exactly. I mean, once you have that and, and they've experienced like the guy you talked about earlier, like he's yeah. bought other homes and like with you, it's just like night and day difference. We have that same, you know, whole thing happened with our clients where they've worked with realtors before. So they think they know what it's going to be mm -hmm. like. And then all of a sudden they're like, this is how you guys do this. Like little shit, like a showing always goes on my calendar. And I always send an, uh, an appointment reminder yeah. series of them. Yes. It always goes on the calendar. Most agents don't set up an appointment on their calendar that sends it to their client that it's a, sh that it's a preview of your property. Yep. And it, that was Im important because when we were going to look at yeah. properties, we already had everything plotted out. We know what we were doing. Yeah. Everything was there just pretty much set for us. And right? that's like, to me, that's basic. Like, that's just like, everyone should do that. And, Except and, like hardly anyone ever does And I'm like, that. so what, so I'm just like trying to think, how do other agents do it? They just go and, and meet you somewhere and show property. And there's like, it's not on your calendar. There's like, how did you even remember to do it? Right. How did you expect them to remember it? Right. How do you know where you're, and I'm just like, fuck dude, no. Yeah. Like I get it. I just get all stressed out I thinking agree. about it. I so it has to live on the calendar or it doesn't exist. Yeah, I like so having our things day was already out. planned out for ahead sure. of time. And we were like, oh, we're starting at this time. We're ending at this time. This is where we're starting in yep. terms of location. Like we even plotted it out and we were like, how and my brother was loving this he goes dude that is that is next level like you had it all like kind of plotted out where it was like this perfect yeah it's even drawn know, on there beautifully. yeah exactly right just it was in like case just, you get like, lost just perfectly like just plotted out and everything that's service that's, service, that's something yeah. that we're going to remember that's something that he's going to remember yeah. when someone's like looking at it for a referral he's gonna be like you got to go to shame man yeah. because you're taking all that stress all the complexity the things that make the process in itself, in itself stressful, you're trying to take as much of that off of them as possible. Yeah, and then also like my my little secret sauce is like provide a little levity to the situation. Yes. Like I am I can be professional. Yep. I like to have some fun. I like to, <laughs> you know, have a level of sarcasm and some jokes, some yep. land, yep. some, most don't. But like, <laughs> I think like that's like a fun little version of like making, you know, yourself unique. And you have, you guys have the same yeah. aspect on your end where like the level of service you, br you bring is different. The way you deliver it yeah. is a little different. You know, I think when people meet you too, there it's like also like all these things, these nuances get together and it's like, that's why you're so good. Yeah. That's why you're so successful. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I think what makes good lenders, good agents, good insurance, good, whatever you are stand out 
so much further from the crowd than anyone else because most people are just like cruising by and doing the bare minimum because yep. that's what everyone else does but like how do you do something different might be a little bit more effort or energy but right. like it's worth it the reward yeah is so amazing with it you know and that's and that's the thing i think a lot of people don't get no. in our industry is like just do a little bit more and the reward is just to me like tenfold. Yeah. And they're seeing that now. I don't know. I don't know what numbers look like in the lending world, but like realtors now, I mean, there's a, a report that just came out earlier this week yeah. about a decline in realtor memberships. Mm. Um, so for year over year, it was down 0.66%. So a little bit shy of 1%, which isn't yeah. a lot, yeah. but over the next two years, the national association of realtors, the chief economist is predicting it's up somewhere around 15% of a drop in realtor uh, memberships. That's great. That's nationwide. <laughs> no, it's great. And that's just nationwide. I think yeah, Brevard yeah, County yeah. and, and, and areas. It's really tough for me to say, but honestly, I think that's important because it's good for the business. It's great for the business. It's, it's better like, for the consumer. It's, it's like the cleanse. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you're kind of getting rid of the excess. You're leaving the good, the people that are there that do this as a true profession, and that can provide that service that that client needs. Yeah, I mean, and it's it, the same thing on the lender side. I mean, honestly, it's like it's like freaking you know the house is on fire right now everyone's just jumping out like i mean is that what you see in like the lending world like oh, people absolutely. just jump in and get their like, licenses i mean we, we saw that two years ago yep. right when there was the boom and every every person was like oh i'm a lender i'm a i'm a loan officer uh, you know I'm, I'm a broker i'm this that whatever and just you know half of them are gone right now i mean again it i don't obviously i'm exaggerating by half yeah. but there's a good chunk of it i, I would probably say at least 30 percent if not more, are, are out of the lending platform right now. Especially look at a lot of the major servicers. You know, they're closing up shops, selling out their mortgage division. They don't want to be a part of it. A lot of lenders, a lot of brokers right now are doing the same thing. And something interesting within real estate is like there are realtors that have other jobs. Right. So they're pursuing real estate from a part-time standpoint. Can they do that in the lending They world? can do the same thing on the lending side. So there side are lenders that are part-time. And so there are lenders that are part-time. I don't know how that works. I mean, I just think it's crazy, but... There are lenders that can, I mean, you know, loan originators that can do that. But I think at the end of the day, the same thing with, with the real estate agents that do it, they fizzle out because yeah. this is, and I'd say to this, every person getting into the industry, I'm like, this is not a part-time job. No, you, it, it is a full-time and, and more than full-time in order to be successful. Yeah. Like if you want to just kind of get into it and be like, oh, I'll do, a, I'll do a deal a year or, you know, a loan a year or, yeah, okay, great. Like you can say that you're a loan originator or you're a real estate agent, but what's the point? What's the, that pisses me off. So when, and I want to use like an engineer as an example, but take, let's take someone that has like another occupation. I'll take a videographer, for example. Right. <laughs> and like, I just meet the guy, maybe I'm showing him property. And then this, this guy, um, we'll call him Jay, just yes. as, just as an example, Jay says, you know, man, I've been thinking about getting into real estate. The first thing that always pops in my mind is like, you know, man, I've been thinking about doing whatever the fuck you you're do. doing. Let just me do to, that. Just the light bulb just goes it. off, right? Yeah. You know, I just want to like, try it. It's yeah. like, why? I don't understand why people think it's okay to say it. it's like, maybe it's cause like a lot of us don't actually like view it as a career. Like I review real estate as my <laughs> career. Like I left the military you know to do thinking? real estate. Maybe they had too good of an experience. Like maybe, maybe you should make it like such a shitty experience that yeah. they're like, I don't ever want to be a real estate agent. That. I don't Gosh, ever want to be a lender. You but, know? <laughs> but it's like, it's just like, why do people think that that's okay to say? And it's like, right. cause the barrier of entry to do this profession is so low, but it's yes. like, if you actually dissected like what we do, how long it takes us to actually like get a career going and get paid. Yep. And then like the, the shit that we don't post online, like in real estate and this is another thing that bothers me most of the things that are posted are like we closed got this like everything's real positive yes. and i'm guilty for that too yeah so like recently i've been trying to show a little bit more about like hey mm -hmm. like this is what it takes to get a client or this is like what happens like you and i had a conversation earlier this week about like i hate to admit it but had a client buyer yeah. that just we weren't working out yeah i wasn't able to retain them luckily you were yep. but it's one of those things that like happens in the industry but we don't talk about that because we all want to we all want to put the fluff out there right yeah, you put the because fluff i think the fluff means success it yeah. equals success but i think and it's so funny because i actually did a topic about this and a video about this i mean months ago but i think what age and i think we even talked a little bit about this too on uh in practical brokers the clients now that are using social media are looking for something different yep. right they want real they don't want the fluff yeah I think they, they've kind of gotten past the fluff and they want like like you just said 
let me hear the real deal. Like what's really happening? What's your experience? And they respect that more than just seeing the fluff. For sure. And, and it's like, it's also how you view it. Like I view all those oper like the, the times where I lose a client or something goes, you know, sideways in a contract as a learning opportunity. And something that like, it's still hard for me to kind of get over like, shit, man, like what could I have done to save that? But ultimately in the back of my mind, it's all, like, I'm able to get through it quickly. I think yep. that's something that makes like good agents, good lenders, they're able to kind of recover quick and then yep. focus back on what they need to. Mm -hmm. But it also opens up this slot of time where I'm able to like actually dedicate that time to people that deserve and people that want me yeah. to work for them and with them. And that's the way like I have to view it to remain positive. Yes. But earlier in my real estate career, man, I would dwell on that shit for like days. I can't believe that. Man, no. how did I lose this guy? Yes. Oh, what could I have done differently? You know, like all these other things. And, Look, and it I took me a while. Honestly yeah. too, like if it was just that one client that you were working with for months and that was your only client. It would be bad. Yeah. No, that's happened. Right. No, for you sure. Know? Yeah. It sucks. But that's the job, I think man. because now, you know, you've gotten to a place also where again, not to say that that you wouldn't treat them just as the same as any other client but like now it's like okay look it just the personalities or whatever it might have been just didn't sure. work out it's okay there's someone that's gonna want my service and understand the value that i bring and that's good i'll move on to that yeah. next and one. a lot of times it's, it's not always personal like they might not exactly. they, they might have chosen this other agent because they like the way that person looks better like it's not necessarily always that it might be just like they think that other agent is able to provide them yeah. more than what they want it might might be a client that like just needs a little bit more like nurturing and mm -hmm. a little bit more whatever whatever it was like i'm happy for that client that they were able to find someone that can satisfy that yeah but i always want to leave it on good terms and just yep. be like hey like I wish you the best. We'll always be here to support. Like, don't ever want to get leave mad. Leave the door open because if yeah. something doesn't work out, they'll just walk right back in. No, and there's there are agents that will like blast those clients. Yeah, like, on social. I've yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, on yeah, social, yeah, it's yeah. like, why are you doing that? Right. They'll, they'll complain about it to other people in their sphere, and it's like, dude, just like let it go, like yep. move on. Like there's enough, you know, consumers in the world for all of us to find our match. Just like yeah. focus on that. Don't focus on looking at the shit. negatives and, no, and what you lost. Right. Like it, you just said, all right, night, I got a time slot open up now. Or yeah. I got some time to work with a new client, yeah. a new buyer. Right. Yeah. It's okay. Shane again, man, it's always a pleasure, dude. Obviously the fact that we could just sat like sat here and talk for about almost two hours and covered yeah. so much, just it's amazing to what we could do. Right. That's no, cool, man. <laughs> it's, it's just easy to talk to you. And I enjoy being around you, man. Honestly, I appreciate, I appreciate you. Dude. Same thing. Likewise. Yeah, dude. Now, are we going to go grab some wine when that place opens up? I can't wait. Uh, first round's on me, we'll but the there, we'll second, third, day. fourth, fifth, sixth, <laughs> I got the it. tenth is on you. <laughs> we didn't even talk about the Whole Foods. Oh. Anyway, yeah, listen, next one. Next, next time, one. Next all time, right. Time, well, listen, again, appreciate it. We'll put all that content out and hopefully you guys uh, actually enjoyed it. Learned a lot of things from, from this and uh, we'll have some more videos coming up. Yeah, to the next one. All right.